and here we are, module eight, the last module of the term. So we're getting kind of antsy for the term to end, aren't we? Uh, I'm going to do two problems from module eight. I'm going to do problem number one, which is the chi-squared goodness of fit test, and then problem number 10, which deals with analysis of variance. Those are kind of the two bookends for this chapter, or this, this module. So let's get started, shall we? So here we are with problem number one. Um, we need to determine the expected count for each outcome. Expected count is just the sample size n, 793, times the proportion, or the hypothesized proportion. Uh, for 1, it's 0.14. So the expected count for 1 is going to be 793 times 0.14, which is 793 times 0.14 equals two decimal places. So this is 111.02. For outcome two, it's going to be 0 0.38 times 793. 301.34. For three, it's going to be 793 times 0 0.23, 182.39. And for 4, it's going to be 793 times 0 0.25, 198.25. Woohoo! I'm going to close that for now. Let me ask you a couple questions. If I add up all th four of these probabilities, what will it add up to? If I add up all four of these numbers, what will it add up to? If you answered one, you're absolutely correct. There's only four possible outcomes. One of those outcomes must happen. Probability of being in one of these four is one, or 100%. It's a guarantee. And these, for the same reason, these 793 trials, each of them has to go in to one and only one of these. So adding up all four of these will give us that 793. It's kind of interesting to think about. So this problem dealt with expected counts which is important for the chi-squared goodness of fit test. And now, problem 10. Your last homework problem for the term. Don't forget to do the final exam, but that's I don't have any videos for that. So let's look at this. An engineer wants to know if the mean, I have an idea that, ooh, data table. Cool, oh, that's the real data. Let's go ahead and open this in StatCrunch. I have a feeling we're going to need to do that eventually. Open in new StatCrunch. Okay. Let's take a look. Range the windows a little bit more. An engineer wants to know if the mean strength of three different concrete mixes differ. So engineer wants to compare three means and determine if the three means are the same or if at least one differs from the other. So he randomly selects nine cylinders from each and then he measures the strength. So these values are the strength in pounds per square inch and these are for the mixture A group, these are the mixture B group, and these are the mixture C group. The null hypothesis for analysis of variance stuff is always equals. Mu A equals mu B equals mu C. The alternative hypothesis is always at least one of the three means is different. The logical opposite of all of them being the same is at least one is different. Explain why we cannot use one-way ANOVA to test these hypotheses. 
Well, let's look at these. Are the samples not independent of each other? Is the standard deviation for mixture B much more than two times larger than the standard deviation for mixture A? Are the populations not normal? How would we figure these things out? I mean, goodness gracious. Um, let's take a look at C. We could check to see if the populations are normally distributed. Graph, histogram. Let's go ahead and do all three of these. See if we can do that. And let's throw a normal distribution on top and compute. There's one, there's two, there's three. Now those don't look too bad. Not positive though. Standard deviation of mixture B. Okay, let's figure out the standard deviation summary stats uh, in columns. I'm going to do it for all three columns. I held down the shift while I clicked on those. And we just want the standard deviation, so just click that and compute. <gasps> ah, there we go. Standard deviation for B is 389. That's more than three times the standard deviation mixture A. So we can't do B, we can't do ANOVA because of B. That question is complete. That seemed a little too easy. Since that was so easy, let's go back and try number nine. Okay, we can get the data. We're going to open that data in StatCrunch. Oh, that didn't happen easily. We're going to do new stack crunch as usual, pop it over here, uh, close my bookmarks. So there's that. So we've got the data in there, so don't need to look at that. Highway safety, the null and alternative. The null is always at their equal, so we got the nulls are all the same. And the alternative is always at least one mean is different. C. Now let's look at, oh, continue. B. Normal probability plots indicate the sample data could come from normal populations. Good. Are the requirements to use the one-way ANOVA satisfied? No, because the largest sample standard deviation is more. Well, let's figure that out. Stat, summary stats by columns. And we're going to, again, I'm holding down the shift key while I click on that and check the standard deviations. 199, 188, 127. Hey, standard deviations look fine. Largest standard is more, that's not true. Uh, populations are normally distributed. I mean, hey, we just figured that out. Uh, samples are independent. See, we can do it. So let's test the hypothesis. So let's actually do ANOVA now. STAT, ANOVA, one way. And it's one way because there's one independent variable. That independent variable is car type or vehicle type. So we're going to select all three columns. Again, hold down the shift while I click on that. Not asked to compute two key. I'm going to anyway because I like to talk. I think that's all we need. And compute. Well, wow, that's a lot. This is this first table is the column statistics. So this is the mean for the large family cars, the mean for the passenger vans, the mean for the mid-sized utilities, etc. So these are sample statistics. Here's the ANOVA table. F stat is our F naught, and that's three eight three three decimal places, three eight four. P value is 0.6868. This p value is greater than alpha, therefore we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We do not have sufficient evidence that any of those means are different. 
since the p-value is four decimal places, 6868, six, eight, there is insufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Thus, we cannot conclude that the means are different at the 0.01 level. Drop box plots of the three vehicle types to support that. Oh, let's continue. Oh, there's the box plots. I bet we could do that with graph. Box plot. Select the columns again, hold down the shift key, select multiple columns. There's the box plots. Uh, these are sideways. And little numbers there. And eh, bigger. So SUVs are on top here. Cars have the highest mean. I'm sorry, the cars have the highest median. Um, that's not true. Cars actually have the lowest median. So it can't be this one. Here's cars. That also is not true. So it must be this one. Cars have the lowest median. In other words, I'm trying to match things I can... And that's it. Now, we did do two key just for fun. Here's what we can now conclude. Well, p-value is greater than alpha, therefore we did not detect a difference. Um, all three of these p-values are also greater than alpha, so we did not detect a difference between passenger van mean and large family car van. I'm sorry, large family cars mean. This p-value is greater than alpha, therefore we did not detect a difference between mid-size utility vehicle mean and large family car mean. And this p-value is greater than alpha, therefore we did not detect a difference between mid-size utility vehicle mean and passenger vans mean. So not only did we not detect a difference up here, but we pairwise, we didn't detect a difference. Now, two key is beyond the scope of this course, but notice you don't have to worry about the calculations. You just have to worry about the, uh, the interpretation because StatCrunch does the calculations for you. So again, hopefully this was helpful. Um, if not, leave questions in the materials questions discussion board. Um, good luck on the last homework assignment, and especially good luck on the final. Take care.